Hi guys, this is Mary from Dot and Boots Vintage Stop, and I'm having a little bit of Wi-Fi trouble, so hopefully I won't have to stop the videotape and just video it and post it on my page, but I want to give a few minutes if anybody's getting on and noticing that the publication is there for a live. But what I'm doing today is I just want to show you uh, what I go through, the process that I do when I am prepping a piece um, before I paint it. So as I'm going, if you have any questions, I'll try to, I'm doing this by myself today, so I'll try to read it and see. If you've got any questions, I'll try to answer them. If I don't see them, I will definitely get on afterwards and um, try to answer them for you. But one thing that I do before I paint a piece is I um, clean it. And I was out there cleaning and prepping the piece. I was going to go ahead and do the video out there, but it is really muggy today. It's been raining all day. I feel like my hair is just growing uh, by the foot with all the humidity. And so the mosquitoes are starting to come out. People are coming home from work and the traffic's getting a little bit heavy. So I thought I'm just going to bring it in the garage. So I'm not going to be able to show you a lot of painting. I don't want my paint to get sticky, but I do want to show you, hopefully at the end, how the um, general finishes paint goes on. But one thing that I do in prepping a piece is I fill a bottle with um, denatured alcohol and water, and I will go ahead and, and do this whole spray bottle because I will use this from piece to piece. Every piece that I do, I prep this way and um, so I will just spray my piece down in sections I don't necessarily spray the entire piece but I'll you know spray the top and then I'll take a Scotch-Brite pad and I will go ahead and scrub it with the Scotch-Brite pad and um, this is going to get rid of any wax residue that's on there any food that's on there when you get a vintage piece which I love this. I have never seen an MCM drum table before, so I'm excited about doing this piece. This is just an awesome piece, um, which I love drum tables anyway, but this is just cool with being mid-century modern. But I'll go ahead and spray it, clean it with the Scotch-Brite pad, get the residue off of there, and because paint is not going to stick to a piece that is not clean. And then I will go ahead and take a damp cloth and wipe the piece down. And you don't want to get that cloth too wet. You don't want to soak your wood. You just want it damp enough that it's going to wipe that off. And denatured alcohol will evaporate, so you don't have to worry about a heavy rinsing for it. Like if you were using another type cleaner on it, um, you would. I would recommend definitely rinsing that piece off so that you get that soap residue off. So after I do the denatured alcohol scrub and wipe it down, then I am ready to sand it. And these are those wonderful sanding pads that I talked about in another video. They come in this size, but, and General Finishes carries these, they come in this size, but I will go ahead and cut them in half. And then I will write on there, um, if I'm working with poly, if I'm working with paint, if I'm working with primer. And the reason I do that is say this piece was like one of the white chairs that I was, uh, that I had done the other day. And I grabbed a sanding pad that I was sanding in between coats on black or brown or the coastal blue and the little flex were on here and they got on my final finish. Um, that would I would not be a happy camper so I always try to write on the back of mine what not necessarily the color which sometimes I will do that I will say black or gray or navy but I will definitely say paint primer or poly so you take that 12 uh, this is 220 grit sanding pad and I love these because they are so flexible and you just rough up your finish. I mean, you go over the whole thing with the sanding pad. And what's nice about this is this does bend and cuff around here. So you can just hold this in your hand and mold it to whatever you are sanding. And I love it because in the front, 
Um, it's got some grooves in there, and you can literally just take your finger and you can bend it down in there. And I, I just absolutely love these flexible sanding pads. And they are, they're washable too and, and reusable. Um, so that, I'll go ahead and uh, do the sanding, and then I will take my tack cloth and I will get all the dirt off of it with the tack cloth. And anything, any um, bits that of uh, sanding that's left over, I'll get all that off. And then we're ready to go. We're ready to, we're ready to paint. This piece I'm doing in the coastal blue. And I like to work with a damp brush. So um, instead of running my brush through water or dipping it in a cup and then having to squeeze out that excess and um, I will just take a mister and I will mist, which I love this little thing, it is so cool. Um, but I'll just mist my brush. Now whether I'm doing a sponge brush or a bristle brush, I'll do the same thing. And I'll go ahead and mist it and th then it's like you're going to your piece with a brush that you've already um, seasoned. And uh, it just helps the paint go on smoother. The paint's not gonna grab to it and then stick on those first initial strokes. So I always keep my, and, and then it, if you see that your paintbrush is drying, you can just give it a spray, a light mist, and you're good to go. Um, like I said in my other video, I always put my paint in a separate container because I'm really bad about um, going into my paint can and possibly contaminating it. Uh, sometimes you'll have your brush angled. It'll fall off on the floor, pick up some dirt. You won't notice. You'll pick it up and think it looks okay. Put it in your paint can and then you go to brush and you, you're like, what are these little uh, grindy things in here? It's because dirt's gotten in there. So I'd rather just ruin a little bit of paint than a whole can of paint. So I just dip that sponge brush in there. And I will say, if I'm, if I were painting this and I weren't on video, because there's just not a lot of room here, I would turn this piece upside down. And my first coat, I would paint with it being upside down, and then I would flip it over for my second coat and paint it right side up. And that just lets me make sure I'm not missing anything. I'll do that with chairs too. Now I won't do that with a whole dresser or a chest of drawers. I'm not turning that upside down, but I will do end tables or tables or uh, small tables or um, chairs. And that way you're just getting, um, every inch covered and you're not missing anything. So I just wanna show you how well this um, coastal blue goes on. I'm gonna paint a little bit on and then I'll bring you up close and show you. And if you're in the Huntsville area, I have some general finishes paint at the Twisted Tree in Madison. I don't have every color out there, but I have a good bit. And I also have general finishes chalk style paint. And I do have, um, the, some of the sanding pads there and some chip brushes and some tack cloths there. So if you're interested in any of that, give the Twisted Tree a visit, stop on by and get you some paint and brushes and sandpaper. And if you're there, um, let me know, like the page. Uh, I can see the hearts or the likes go up. If you have any questions, go ahead and put those in. And let me go ahead. I've got the one coat started on here. And I'm just going to come back. I'm a messy painter, so I will go ahead and tape off the feet on here. I'm thinking of doing this in the coastal blue and then doing gold on the feet, gold on the hardware. And I'm uh, leaning more towards staining this top. So I'm not going to paint this top just yet because I may go ahead and take it down to the raw wood as I was sanding it. It's a beautiful blondish color under, under here. So I may go ahead and stain it. But... Um, let me go ahead and show you what this coat looks like on here, just on the one leg. And it, general finishes give such good coverage. So let me go ahead and, I'm sorry, I'm doing this by myself, so I'm trying to get you, and there is some glare on there, but that is such, it looks a little more royal on here, but it is a navy. It is a navy, and it's and I'll just go ahead with the sponge brush and get it up on there. And you don't need to play with it too much. It's better to go ahead and put um, 
two light coats or three light coats than one heavy coat that doesn't dry evenly and that can start to peel or get gummy, especially in this humidity. So that's one reason why I'm real careful in just doing it thin because I may have to, depending on what this weather's life e like, even sand it and, and then add the other coat to it. I wanna say too with the drawer, and I think on the video or on the picture that I posted, it did show the little chip on there. I went ahead and puttied that uh, sanded it and now it's got its second coat of putty on there since I'm painting it uh, it doesn't matter that that is different than the wood grain that's on here because it's all going to be covered up and smooth and you'll never know that I even uh, even fixed it so I hope this helps my goal is to help you to become a good painter and be successful and some of you might think oh I can't do that but you can everybody start it somewhere and I'll be honest general finishes paint goes on so smooth and easy and has such good coverage that I th anybody can get this paint and a paintbrush and go to town on a piece but if I can help you in any way just message me um, like I said make a comment on the bottom and I'd be glad to help you with um, your journey to the painting world so have a good evening Thanks for joining me.